Hi Libra, welcome to your Year Ahead 2018 reading with me, Raphael Ray from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. I just want to say thank you so much for all of your patience and your continued support. It means the absolute world. So before we start, I would like to bless both of these decks with all forms of love, light, peace, prosperity and abundance. And I hope that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise and they help you on your path to your highest vibrational good. Okay, so, first out of January, Temperance and the Emperor, wow, so two really powerful cards actually, straight away. So you've got the Temperance card, which is all to do with spiritual alchemy. It's all to do with how you change the energy in and around your life through spirituality. Um, this kind of says to me that because January, you know, the cards that come out straight away are the ones that are going to set the tone for the year. Temperance card actually represents the sign of Sagittarius. This is about your higher goals, your higher ideals, it's about your higher learning, it's about your intuitive wisdom, but it's about how you change the, um, the path, that it's about how you take the, the challenges that your path has been graced with and turn them into something beautiful. And also it's about how you change them into your gold. What is the process of alchemy? The process of alchemy is turning base metals or crap metals effectively or lower um, lower valuable metals into gold and you know the, the process is exactly the same with spiritual alchemy it's about taking the hurt the pain and the uh, dissatisfaction with the challenges that we face in our life and turning the lessons that we go through or rather the lessons that we take away from those aspects and those in uh, those experiences sorry and turn them into something that you know that's positive, sorry for the lack of a, a more diverse um, or inclusive term, but yeah, this is a great card, the Temperance card is a very beautiful card, it's a very spiritual card, it's the process of spiritual distillation, um, and that's like taking all of the impurities out of your soul so that what is left is pure, so that what is left is, is, um, is whole and complete and ready to do the work. What is the work? Well, the highest work of elevating the world consciousness in some way shape or form which is really interesting because then we've got the emperor and the emperor was, represents the sign of aries which is all to do with being at the forefront it's all to do with um being a pioneer you know standing being a leader being a soldier leading by example you know really leading by example the other part of this as well is the emperor represents the institutions banks, universities, hospitals, it also represents commitment. And this to me says that this is about you being committed to your spiritual goals, to your spiritual path. Um, the year ahead in 2018 carries the energetic vibration of the number 11. So look into that, um, I've got a chat, a pay, I've got a video up about the energy of the numerology for 2018. So look into that. Um, yeah, so this January is a very, very interesting month and I think very much at the forefront of your mind is going to be how can I make myself better and how can I tap more into my innate spirituality, but more importantly how can I become an authority, you know, it's interesting because Libra is usually about what's best for other people, how do I help others, um, this is going to be a year where you start to go inward more. You'll be more introspective than you are outrospective, and that's never ever a bad thing. Okay, February. The Seven of Pentacles and the Three of Swords. Okay, so this is interesting because the Seven of Pentacles talks about tying yourself to something for a long time and choosing um, what to invest your time and your effort and your energy into. And then you've got this, the Three of Swords, which is about separating yourself from something. So when I see these two together, I think February is gonna be a month where you decide that you've put enough time and energy into something. I think this is gonna be the month where you finally make a decision <laughs> 
Libra, making a decision, um, where you make a finite decision and say, look, you know what, I think I've given enough time, energy, resources, commitment to this situation, person, thing, and I'm not doing it anymore. I'm done with that. It's time for me to move on. It's time, to me to, time for me to pull the resources that I was putting into this investment and put them elsewhere for my own greater good and for the other person, situation or things, greater good. So this is very much, yeah, this is about you deciding that actually, you know what, I don't want to be a part of this anymore because there's nothing more to gain. Um, and this isn't like a, oh well, I'm not getting anything out of it so I'm walking away. It's more to do with this situation has run its course. It's no longer a viable investment for my feelings. It's no more a viable assessment, a, a, a investment for my finances. You know, whatever the situational thing that it pertains to, this is you deciding that you've put enough into it to be able to walk away. Yeah, you'll feel some separation loss or anxiety because, you know, once you've put a lot of time into something, and this is something, you know, because the Seven of Pentacles, if you want to talk about a time sequence, is seven years. This is something that you've put a lot of time, a lot of effort into. And it's like now, you, you know, you just come into a place where you're like, actually, do you know what? It's time for me to walk away now. I've, I've put in enough. And although it's going to hurt me to walk away, I actually think it's going to serve me better in the long run. So, March. Star card, beautiful, absolutely beautiful, and the strength card, what a combo, what a combo. The star card, Aquarius, the strength card, Leo. These guys, if you do it like that actually, are actually direct opposites in the zodiac. Um, the strength card is a sign to do with the world, and um, yeah, the world is to strength the card of the, sorry. The star card is a card of the world, it's a card of the tribe, it's a card of family, groups, people, um, you know, the, the community, as it were. And it talks about, um, very much about hope, it's about glimpsing something from the other side and saying, wow, you know what, I've, I've just had a glimpse of what my dream is, or what my dreams could be, or what I could become if I put the energy, the work and the effort into it. And it's also to do with the greater good for all people. And then you've got the strength card, which is governed by Leo, which is about me. How do I fit into this? And the interesting thing is the overlap here is Aquarius is all to do with how do I stay my individual self within the group and the tribe. Whereas Leo is about how do I stand out from the tribe and separate and differentiate myself. So really interesting because you've got these double motifs. So the star represents the, the higher ideal or the higher consciousness of where you want to take something, of the bright future that you can imagine. The Mobius veil is all to do with the karma. It's all to do with the, um, the emotional uh, and the, the, the spiritual, I guess, um, karma or not baggage. Baggage seems like such a negative word, but... Um, it's like a tool bag, you know? Like, you, you've got a bag that you take with you and some stuff you should unpack and, and continue to take with you so that you master them. And other things, you know, you should probably throw away. Um, is probably what I, I mean by that. But, yeah, March is a very good month for you because it's about having a glimpse at your hopes and dreams, but more importantly, understanding what it's going to take for you to get there. And after you make this decision to walk away from something, you then start to glimpse um, what your place is in the world, what your place is in the grand scheme of things, what your... Um, you know, who you are within the group, who you are within your family, you know, and you're going to start to look at ways of changing that image. You know, if you're seen as the shy, meek one that will do anything for anyone, well, maybe you want that to change. Maybe it needs to change because people are always expecting way too much of you because they know you'll do it. You know, this is about you finding a different... <coughs> 
a different aspect of yourself and demonstrating that into the world, you know. And the other thing about the star card is because it represents Aquarius, it's about truth. And the reason she's naked is because she trusts herself. She trusts that life will be good to her. More importantly, she trusts her own ability to continually make sure that life is good to and for her. The strength card, or the lady on the strength card, is taming the lion. What does that mean? It's about taming your emotions. It's about taming that wildest of creatures, your heart. And when you can tame your heart, you can channel its power. And when you can channel its power, you can start to demonstrate in the world, on stage, like a Leo would, um, who you want to be, who you want to be seen as. So Libra, very, very interesting year for you so far. This is about you kind of stepping up to the plate and saying, no, this is who I want to be seen as, and I won't go back to being viewed as, uh, as others want me to, effectively. Very, very interested. This is, you know, it's kind of like Libra's taking their own life into their own hands and saying, I'm no longer, you know, I want to be a little less we and a bit more me. And there's never anything wrong with that, you know, obviously don't become, you know, a crazy person and <laughs> a megalomaniac, which is not, you know. Um, but it's about claiming yourself for yourself. It's about owning yourself, in, you know, better than ever. So, April, Ace of Wands, lovely. And the Eight of Swords. Okay, so the interesting thing is this is kind of says to me, like, I hear the word backtracking. It's kind of like you make all of this progress in the first three weeks, uh, three months of the year, only to come to April and then start sort of, because you've got the Ace of Wands, which is creating something of, you know, of value for yourself. It's art, music, drama, dance, it's um, books, it's blogs, it's all of that. And it's something that you create for yourself. Then you've got the Eight of Swords, which is constriction, being held back, being held down, it's imprisonment. Um, this... You know, especially after you see this here, because March is a month of deep creation and deeply creating who you now want to be. And then you get this in April, which kind of says, you know, and like I said, the word that I heard was backtracking. It's like you're going to start to stifle that creativity. You're going to start to say, oh, no, maybe I should go back to, you know, maybe it's that your external circumstances or your environment, the people around you have got so used to you being a certain way that now that you're starting to implement these changes, they're like, oh well, if you don't stay the same, I'm gonna shun you. And so therefore you kind of let that convalesce and, and you say, oh, okay, well I'll just go back to who I was. Don't backtrack. We're about forward progression always, being here in this moment, in this present, and continually moving forward. You can't go back and change the past, you can only learn from it, and you can't really do much in the future because you're not there yet. What you can do is pull the strings now to have the outcome that you want later on and further down the line. Do not let anything or anyone stifle your creativity, Libra. It's very, very important. The month of April is going to teach you how to stand for yourself. Okay, May. Harriet, beautiful, and the Two of Wands, lovely. So, awesome. So you have this moment where you're like, oh, you know, maybe I'm doing a bit too much too fast, or maybe I'm making wrong changes or wrong decisions, and then you stand up for yourself. And, you know, a part of you says, actually, no, I'm not going back to that. It's almost like you, after, you know, these first three months and the big changes that you make, it, you know, within your interactions and your communications... People then try to force you back into this old bubble. And the constriction of the Eight of Swords comes in because you're like, okay, this is really uncomfortable. I never, you know, I spent so long feeling like this, allowing other people in situations to make me feel like this. Yeah, no thanks. That's not going to work for me. Uh, it's going to be a no from me, guys. <laughs> um, and then, bam, you come into May 
with the chariot, success, victory, uh, people finally understanding that you're not going to be a scapegoat anymore, that you're not going to be the person that will be the yes man or the yes woman or constantly giving in or constantly compromising for somebody else. This is you standing in and claiming your own power like never before. The chariot card is the success, it's the victory, it's the hard won yes, it's the hard earned you know, if it was a job interview situation and there were 50 candidates, this is you coming out on top because you had the endurance to last it out over anybody else. Um, and then you've got this, the two of wands, which is, you know, the two of wands is about affluence, it's about, you know, finances, it's about stepping out of the past and into the future and therefore having the world at your disposal the world in your palm, in the palm of your hand. And you have the world in the palm of your hand in the Two of Wands because your understanding of where you've come from and where you want to go, where you want to be, what it is that you want to create now, what is important for you going forward. Um, and these two cards together, I mean, you know, it's, it's great because you've got seven, which is endurance, seven, which is um, analysation and understanding. And then you've got the two, which is the partnership and the creation of the partnership. Um, very, very powerful month because after the, the moment of self-doubt and understanding and realisation of how uncomfortable the old aspects of self were, um, you then step into this and you start to end up finding yourself mixing shoulders with just the right people. Um, and it's like once your vibration changes, you start attracting to you totally different people that push you to different ways of being, different ways of um, different ways of living. June. of pentacles lovely and six of cups awesome so the ace of pentacles represents the period of a year and it's the root foundation powers of earth and this is all to do with your physical body this is all to do with your health it's all to do with your work your finances your money the things that you own um, and then you've got the six of cups so in terms of uh, May, June the month of June is going to be a time where you can start to make money or start to think of ways to make money that you have already done. So for some people, this is like you've taken a course in something, you've got a skill that's actually dormant, that you don't use anymore, that actually could be quite lucrative for you. So in the month of June, it's like you're dusting the that off. You're saying to yourself, actually, yeah, you know what, I've got this, this and this skill and I don't actually use them. How can I, you know, get back into them? Start by, you know, if you're, as, as an example, uh, one of the skills that I have that I no longer use is I'm a massage therapist. And, you know, if I wanted to, what I would probably do is start with family, you know, phone some people up and say, I'll oh, come around, I'll give you a treatment, get my hands back into it, get my body remembering again, you know, what my skills are, how they work and, you know, what I'm good at and tapping back into that energy so that I can utilise the skill. And then once I'm ready, go back into it and start, you know, building a business or something lucrative from that, that is from my past, you know, and this is something in a practical way, Libra, that you know how to do, it's something that you're already qualified in, something that you already have an understanding of, excuse me, of how to do, and you know how to do it very, very well. And in the past, it's been something that you've enjoyed immensely, but you put it down for various different reasons. Because the Six of Cups is happy memories, it's the past, it's things coming back to us, it's things that we reflect on in an emotional sense, um, that bring us joy, that bring us happiness. So when I see these two together, this is something coming back from your past in a practical way that you are already qualified in, that can be quite lucrative for you. July. Ooh. One out, three of cups. And 
and the Six of Pentacles. Okay, so again, lovely cards. Interesting, because the Three of Cups represents reunions. So this is like this past energy again, things coming back around for a second try, for a second um, try. This is, in the month of July, plan get-togethers uh, with people that you've studied with previously, plan get-togethers with people that you haven't seen in a while, people that um, encouraged you to take said, you know, certain courses or whatever for skills that you used to have. Um, and, you know, have that experience of enjoying your time with those people. And the fun that, ge that is generated during that will breed some kind of charity. Um, and I don't mean, like, people feeling sorry for you or, like, oh, you know, oh, you, you know, let me help you, let me give you this, let me give you that. Like, it's not about that at all. The Six of Pentacles is a card of charity, but it's also a card of karmic debts repaid. And I kind of feel... That this is like, in the past, you've helped somebody out. In the past, you've, or several people actually, um, you know, friends of yours, yours that are good friends, people that you would never cash favours in for the things that you've done for them because you did them out of the kindness of your heart because you wanted to help them. And it's like these reunions that happen now kind of get you excited again and start talking about the things that you can do and the things that you haven't used in a very, very long time. And then this is these people coming forward and saying, look, you know what, I really think that you should go for it. And any support that you need, I'm happy to give you, I'm happy to help you in any way, shape or form. You know, this is allowing people to support you in some way, shape or form to get back into what it is that you already have or that you already know how to do. Uh, so, you know, just through enjoying yourself and catching up with old friends and old acquaintances and old colleagues, you know, you could get in, uh, some much needed allies and support for future projects that you would like to put into, um, into fruition that revolve around skills that you already have. August. Justice. And the world. Wow. Okay, so in August you will be signing contracts and you will be finalising some contracts as well. Uh, for many of you, I feel like this is where the changeover happens. In August, you will start to really look at what you do and what you can do. Because this is you. You know, the Justice card represents the sign of Libra. And this is your strongest month. You know, as I see it, this is, in the month of August, this is you in a primal power, a pos a primal power position. Because you've got your own card here, and then you've got the world card here, which precedes all major changes, and all uh, it's like a wipe, wipe clean slate. The other th part about this as well that's really interesting, you've, you've got Justice card, which is number 11, which is you. 11 is a master number, a master vibration. And then on top of that, you've got this, which is, even though the world card is number 21, it's actually the 22nd major arcana. So you've got the power of 11 and 22. That's a really, really deep set of numbers there. It's a really, really powerful month for you in terms of creating the things that you want and, you know, really not even taking a risk, taking a calculated, uh, making a calculated decision for the, the, you know, for the betterment of your life. End of story. So the Justice card represents contracts, signing of contracts, all things legal, all things um, contractual, all things mutually beneficial. Uh, because it talks about the interaction of people on a, a paperwork sort of level, you know, so the official stuff. Then you've got the world card, which is like a white clean slate. And it's interesting because Saturn's just come into Capricorn. Saturn is home. So Saturn has completed its whole revolution now around the sun, which, you know, in and of itself is pretty amazing. It's going to be there for the next two and a half years. And I kind of feel like that cycle starts for you personally in the month of August next year that's when you you will really come into your own um, and start to feel this what happens in August is I believe that this project this set of skills that you used to have that you've decided to bring back into your life 
create a business or you know some sort of business model or a website with um, it becomes official in August it, it becomes a go and with these cards here it doesn't just mean that you have you know the side of right on your side but on top of that you've got the blessing of Saturn which means that this thing can only gain it can only uh, become more solidified it will have its challenges just like everything does absolutely but it will be something that is concrete and something that will remain concrete as it goes forward very very interesting very exciting for you September. The Hierophant. So, establishment, the establishment, the status quo, and the Wheel of Fortune. So, a second month where you have two major Alcana cards. So, look at this. You've got January, you've got August. And now you've got September as well, where you've got real sort of power moves to be made. So the Hierophant card actually represents the status quo. It represents the um, you know the hierarchy of the institution. It also represents um, it can represent even initiation in some respects as well. But in terms of your reading, the way that I'm feeling this is it kind of says to me that. You know, these things that you solidify, that you start to, um, what's the word, uh, that you start to, you know, these skills, like I said, this thing that you start to retrain in or, you know, reinvigorate yourself in, that you turn into a business and make a decision to move on with, becomes something established, becomes something very established in the space of a very short time, actually. Why do I say that? Because then you've got the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune is Jupiter. And Jupiter is all about blessings. It's about opportunities. So this is you being given consistent um, and, uh, you know, and big, amazing opportunities to become a well-known member of your field. A well-known and well-respected business or company um, within your chosen field. This is your, your business taking off. This is your business being blessed. Um, you know, and, and finding some sort of, um, some sort of real sort of tangible result that people can see. And it's like, you know, in the space of, what, one, two, three, four, five, in the space of five months, you start to see some really big kind of changes taking place, you know. Hold on to your seats. It's, it's going to be a really, really fast year. Um, although 2011 itself is going to be quite a slow year compared to the, the previous ones, certainly to, compared to the last five, this one will be a lot slower, which is nice. Um, so yeah, very, very exciting month. October. The Four of Wands. And the nine of wands. Okay, so let me be really honest with you. I kind of feel like a lot of the changes that are going to be implemented in your life are really for the better. They create a happy financial home. They create a stable home. They create the feeling of wealth and abundance. Just don't forget that it's not just you in for this ride. If you've got a family, a partner, wife, spouse, husband, girlfriend, cat, dog, uh, you know, the changes don't that happen in our lives don't ever just happen to us. They happen to the people around us as well, and certainly those closest to us. And it would be nice for you to keep them informed of these big sweeping changes that are going to take place, because sometimes it's not easy. You know, when you're just along for the ride on somebody else's roller coaster, sometimes it can be it, it, difficult to adjust. You don't know when it's going to turn, you don't know when it's going to dip, you don't know when it's going to go high, you know, or when it's going to spin you around. Keep them informed. You know, those, those of you that are committed, that are married, keep your partner, your husband, your wife informed. Let them know what is happening. Give them a play-by-play -play so that they don't just feel like they can anticipate what's coming, but they actually feel a part of the journey that you're on. 
You know, our journeys and our lives don't ever just belong to us, they belong to everybody that we touch. And for those of, you know, those people that are married to, attached to, entwined with, emotionally connected to us on the journey, um, sometimes it can be scary because you don't know what to expect or anticipate. And sometimes you might need that person's support. And if they haven't known what's going on for the last nine weeks, how are they supposed to support you, you know? So... Be sure to tell those closest to you what is happening in your life. They will love you and respect you even more for it. Okay. Got November. Page of Swords, Knight, uh, Page of Wands, okay, so this is about your markers of consciousness, because the pages are very much like aces, so these are new beginnings, they can represent children as well, um, children will feature very heavily in the month of November, and this will be very much about you having to um, explain yourself and you know not like being chastised like a child or anything like that it's going to be about you like I said you know giving a play by play of what's taking place um, <clears throat> the other part of this is it's about where your mind is at so swords is all to do with your intellect this is going to be a month where your mind is on point where you are sharp you're witty you're switched on you've got enough energy to have like five conversations in one you know and still have energy then to go on and write a bloody essay if you need to then you've got the page of wands which talks about you having the inspiration to create something i feel that this is about a book um, why do I say that? Because, like I said, the aces are very, the pages are very similar to wands. This could be a book. It could be a creative work of some sort. It's definitely a message. You have an idea for a, a message or a vision that you have to get out that you really feel like you need to share with people. And this is you finally finding the inspiration to do so. It's about you finding a, a way to demonstrate your passion for other people that becomes relevant for them in their lives so that they can see how you do things and say, actually, you know what, that works for me. You know, I understand what you're saying, I understand where you're coming from. But yeah, certainly um, November is going to be an interesting month for you and it's going to be one of many surprises. It's going to be one of many new things, new things coming in, new ideas taking off. And then finally, you have December. Empress, beautiful, and the Hermit, that's interesting, because you've got a double hit now, so that's, you've got two major, two majors, two majors, two majors, and then you've got two pages, and now you've got a double hit of the uh, Virgo energy. And that's really exciting because the Empress talks about things that are lush, fertile. It talks about a fertile mind. It talks about a lush surroundings. It's a beautiful place. The Hermit talks about you taking a journey or a journey of discovery. Some, very often the Hermit is a quest that you take. Sometimes it can be a physical journey. Often it's a journey of the mind. It's a journey of the senses. It's a journey, a spiritual journey. It could be a journey inwards to discover a lot about your personal internal world. Um, and this is about you tapping into and finding the beauty within your life. Why do I say that? Because the hermit is the quest that you go on. It's you searching for things. It's you coming to completion. Now the interesting thing is quite a few signs that I've read for have had the Hermit as their final outcome, uh, or as their December card, as one of their December cards, which tells me that next year, although 
you know, it's, it's not going to be a nine year in any way, shape or form. It's still going to come with a lot of completions. And I think a big part of that is because 20, uh, 2018 is a number 11. And in order to get to the master numbers, we have to go through the power of nine to complete things so that we can elevate and ascend and turn into that. Um, yeah, and then you've got, you know, the, the empress. Like I said, she's the fertile mother. She's beauty. She's grace. She's poise. But she's the beautiful surroundings. She's the, um, the energy and the thought and the feeling behind something beautiful. It's about you opening up because it's a very Venusian card. Actually, if you look there, she's got the symbol of Venus there. And this is about finding the fertility within the mind because it's got links to the, uh, the pineal gland, which is about seeing through the third eye, which is about seeing through the space of beauty, which if you look at the sun disc, the temperance card has. So you've already laid the foundations of this in January and in December you solidify it. Um, I think for you, Libra, it's interesting because I see a lot of signs moving next year. I think there's going to be a lot of shifting energy. I don't think many people will stay where they are. I think there's going to be a lot of people moving next year. And I really feel that for you guys, you discover the place that you want to move in December 2018. You will look back on December 2018 and say, do you know what, that was the year I decided to move and that was the year that I found out where I wanted to be in this world for the rest of my life. So very, very interesting. Your power months, January, uh, August, September, November and December. You know, I mean, you've got another power month there in March. Uh, you know, April is going to be, oh, it's uncomfortable to be that old me. That doesn't fit anymore. Um, really, really interesting. I've been using the Luminous Spirit Tower to, um, to open my, um, it's like the key to the year. What's the final message that you need to know? So, and I love them, they're beautiful. They're so simple, and that's where the power is. Strength. The strength card, that they're stunning. Look at them, so simple but so beautiful. So this is it, Libra. This is about you finding your strength. It's about you finding your courage to just be yourself. It's about you finding the courage to not make decisions for other people, not make your decisions based on what other people need, not make your decisions in relation to wanting or needing to be liked or accepted. It's about you putting yourself out there and saying, this is what's important. This is what's important for my life. It's about establishing yourself and saying, you know what? This isn't about treading on anybody to get to my dreams. It's about achieving my dreams and then sharing them with everybody. But until I've achieved them, I can't make my decisions based on what everybody else wants or needs in my life or from my life. Do keep in mind the partners, though. That's the one message that I will continually reiterate. Do keep in mind, you know, those closest to you so that they know what's going on with you so that they um, stand some chance of being able to navigate your life with you. Um, it's an amazing year. It looks like one that's filled with lots of change and lots of shifting and lots of um, self-preservation. Libra, have an amazing 2018 I wish you an abundance of love, light, peace, prosperity and abundance itself. And I hope you have an awesome, awesome festive time. <sighs> Excuse me. Take care and I will see you very soon for more videos.